happy Thursday and welcome to Melissa's Crafting Treehouse and to my latest episode of Treehouse TV. My name is Melissa Kerman and I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. I've been a demonstrator for 18 years. If you follow me at all, you know that for sure because we've been celebrating the last couple of weeks and those of you out there that follow me have been so amazing uh, sharing in my celebration over the last uh, couple of weeks. Um, so welcome, whether you're here for the live or you're joining on the replay. Um, hi, Betty. I see people joining in. <laughs> I only see some names. I see numbers at the top of the screen. Hi, Jackie. Welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Today I have a lot of fun in store. I'm super excited um, because I, 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 got, I gave you guys a sneak peek of what I was sharing last week. Um, what we were going to share this week. I asked you all if you wanted to see it. You said you wanted to see it. That makes me so happy because I know you're going to like it. <laughs> um, uh, hi, Sharon. Hi, Barbara. I see names jumping across the screen. I know I'm going to miss somebody, so just know I will check the comments later and say hello if I miss you. Um, I hate to miss people because I want you all to feel included. Hi, Bonnie. Good to see you. Yay. <laughs> Um, so yes, I have projects to share. The focus of today's projects are the emboss resist technique um, and I'm going to be showing a few ways of, of how to do it. Um, and then at the end, I've got a whole bunch of samples that I want to share with you as well. So make sure you stay to the end to see those. I'm also going to recap last week and um, some of um, the, well, the prize winners, of course, and then some of the little tidbits of information that um, came out when I read the comments, which I thought was really fun and interesting. So um, anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. I actually wanted to just, well, thank you all for uh, celebrating my 18 year anniversary with me. Um, so much, so many wonderful comments and, um, and congratulations and good wishes um, on all the comments, which was just so fun uh, to see. Um, uh, but I also got a few cards and I wanted to share those cards with you. One of them came in the mail today. So super sweet, people who've sent me cards. And I love this one. This is from uh, Robin Lacey. Thank you, Robin. I know it's backwards. I probably should show it when uh, the camera's facing down, but you can, you can get the gist of it. Um, great card. Thank you, Robin. And then this card came today from Julia o o Osuna. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but um, uh, I apologize if I'm not. Anyway, this of course is with the berry, um, um, what is it called? Very delightful designer paper. I, I can't remember. Too many things to remember. But just what a sweet card, right? Isn't it so pretty? She cut out all those little blueberries in there. And then that ribbon she colored because that's the polka dot tool ribbon. Um, oh, I see somebody from Somerville, Massachusetts. That's right around the corner from where I grew up. <laughs> How wonderful. Um, and the name went by too fast. So hello, person from Somerville. <laughs> Anyway, see people. Anyway, so just a lovely little card that she sent me. So sweet. So thank you for uh, sending cards for my 18 year anniversary. And thank you for being here tonight. So uh, just uh, that's where I wanted to start. So the other thing, okay, so last week we did um, entries for prizes. There's going to be a prize today, actually two prizes. Not as big as the last couple weeks, but I think you'll still like it. Um, so I'm going to tell you how you're going to win those. But I wanted to recap what was uh, shared last week and how you won prizes last week because it was kind of interesting information I thought you might like to know. So um, I asked people what their favorite prize was. Had them do the hashtag favorite prize. Oh, yay, Robin's here. Hi, Robin. <laughs> Thank you for your card. <laughs> um, and uh, anyway, so the prizes were retired goodies, a wish list pad in the Winterwood stamp set, and the Saddle Brown uh, stays on with a reinker. I found it really interesting what people's favorite choices were. So I thought I would just recap and let you know. So 12, I had 12 responses of people who were, were preferred the retired goodies, four that tied for the wish list and the Winterwood stamp set, and three that said they were interested in the Saddle Brown stays on. I was really surprised. Okay, so you guys like retired stuff. That's cool. <laughs> I love it. So, um, Anyway, I thought that was just kind of interesting and surprised that everybody didn't want the Winterwood stamp set, although some of you may have it already, so that might be why. So, um, hey Susan, good to see you here. It's been a long time since I remember seeing you here. <laughs> All right, um, 
Let's see what else. Okay, and then the other thing that was interesting is I asked you guys for creative idea, creative requests, things you wanted me to share or show, um, and also class requests. So I thought these results were kind of interesting. Um, great ideas, so excited. I have this long list of ideas of things that I know you wanna see, so that's super fun. Um, but the top choices, the top things that had repeated responses were masculine cards. Not a big surprise, because I know it's hard to find masculine cards, all us, uh, us women out here, you know, doing cards with flowers and pretty things like we do. Um, it's a little hard to find masculine cards, so now I have to rack my brain to do masculine cards. So uh, my tarnished foil technique is perfect for that and the black ice technique, but I gotta be doing something different too. So um, I'll come up with something. So that's on my uh, radar. And then four people uh, said ideas with vellum. So I thought that was pretty neat too. Um, three people said fun folds and three people said, you know, blending of inks, blending of colors and that kind of thing. And there were lots of other responses that had, you know, single, um, single uh, requests, but those were the ones that had repeated uh, requests. So I thought you guys might like to know that. And anytime you want to make a request, please let me know because I always love to have suggestions and ideas. All right, so last week's drawing winners, I announced it on Facebook, but I'm gonna announce it here, like in a post. Um, oh, I see Chris, Chris, Thig, I don't know if I'm saying your name last, Thig, Thigpin? <laughs> Chris, you were a winner last week, I need your address. <laughs> I think I have everybody else's address but yours. So message me with your address, because you were the winner of the Retired Product Assortment and one of my Melissa's Crafting Treehouse um, canvas bags. Everybody got a canvas bag and then something else. And the other thing that was really cool was that all four people that won, and I promise you it was random, um, were, they got their first choice. There was no overlap. There were no two people who wanted the same thing. So that was pretty cool. So I'm glad everybody got their first choice. So um, yes, yeah, so Chris, get, send me your address. You don't have to put it here. Do it in Messenger so it's private. Um, or email me if you have my email address. And uh, let's see. So, um, and if you don't have my email address, so you, let's say create at melissascraftingtreehouse.com. That's where you can find me. <laughs> Um, kind of easy to remember, I think. So uh, Sharon Rowland won the Saddle Brown Stays On and the, um, the ink pad and the refill. And Carol Grove won the set of the three wish list pads. Um, Chris um, won the Retired Products Assortment, and Nancy Fisella, Fisella, I don't know if I'm saying that right either, I apologize if it's wrong, got the Winter Winter Wood set, and of course the canvas bag. So, um, so yay, all the winners, so much fun, so much fun to send um, gifts to people. Christmas in the middle of the year, love it, or your birthday, or whatever you celebrate. <laughs> um, okay, what else? So, Big news of the week, now I'm getting to announcements finally, is that the retired list, the retiring list for the annual catalog that is current now, um, is, uh, just came out earlier this week. It was There was a link in my newsletter and I have a blog post about it. Uh, lots of things retiring, some things up to 75% off. So amazing, right? Not a lot of things at 75%, but there's things at 60 and 40. Anyway, you gotta check out the, the list. Um, and uh, before I go into that, you can start sharing anytime. I'm gonna talk about how you can win next week's prize, but sharing is one of the ways that you can get entered into the prize drawing, um, and uh, you get two entries for each time you share. So that was another thing that I noticed last week. You guys are doing a great job of sharing. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, I think, you know, I always notice, it always tells me how many people shared, and um, last week was 11. I think it's a high. I've never had, had 11 shares in one single Facebook Live. So yay, yay, yay. Thank you so much. Um, you're sharing not because it helped, not just because it helps me, but because you're sharing the love with your friends, I hope. <laughs> um, so anyway, right back on to the retiring list. So lots of things on the retiring list, a couple things that jumped out at me that I wanted to share with you. Um, so somebody mentioned on some demonstrator board that all the embossing powders are gone. Well, that's not really true. They're on the retiring list, but they've just reconfigured them. Stampin' Up! does that sometimes. Um, thanks for sharing, Tricia. <laughs> Yay, I saw somebody, somebody else shared. Thank you so much. Um, so, uh, and anyway, so it's in there, but it's reconfigured. So when you get the embossing powders, you get a combination of black, clear, and white. Now there is no black in the catalog now because it went away last year, I think. So now the black's coming back. But word to the wise, you have to get the set of black, clear, and white or the set of copper, gold, and silver. And I don't know how much the quantity is, but um, if you want individual colors, you want to get them before they retire, right? Because then um, you'll only be able to get them as the set of three. 
Thank you so much for sharing, oh, Barbara and Fran. Yay. <laughs> Um, let's see what else. Okay, other things. Um, the silver foil is going away and that's going away for real. So, uck, you know, I mean, like that's like what I use in my, I, I mean, I can use the, all the foils, but I love the silver. The silver's the original one that I used with tarnished foil and with black ice. So that's going away. Hopefully it'll come back one day. Um, let's see what else. The blends alcohol markers, certain colors are retiring and then they're bringing in new colors. So that's something to pay attention to. Um, if there's certain colors that you want, they may be retiring. So check it out. Sponges are going away. And of course we have our wonderful blending brushes, but sponges are a lot more economical, which I love the blending brushes. Just if you know, you need sponges, uh, you want to go a, a less expensive route. Those are going away. Um, let's see what else. The gold and silver edge ribbon. Who loves that ribbon? I love that ribbon. It's the most neutral, wonderful ribbon. Um, I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about, but I hopefully you do. But that is going away. And then another thing's going away that's just, there's a couple things on the end of my list that is just killing me that they're going away. The stitch shapes uh, dies, right? Those are the most versatile dies. They have squares, they have square circles and ovals in them, and I use them all the time and they're going away. The layering ovals, circles, and um, layering squares are all going away. So all those wonderful dies, it's killing me. And then circle punch is going away. Oh my gosh. Anyway, it's just crazy. So, uh, and I really try to use just current stuff. So uh, I just, I hate that. The rectangle dies stayed. The re rectangle stitch dies have stayed. And the other things that are going away that are just making me so sad my subtle 3d embossing folder guys i use it all the time it's gonna kill me if you don't have that get it i might use it anyway <laughs> forget it i need that embossing folder and then others that i love are woodland is going away and pinewood planks which is sort of the wood grain look so those are just kind of highlights of things that are retiring things are only available while supplies last i think some i think the stamp sets are available um guaranteed for some period of time but i I'm not sure, they vary that sometimes, but all the accessories and the papers and all that other stuff is only while supplies last. So don't miss out on getting your favorite things and getting discounts too. So um, definitely check out that list. So that's what I got to say about the retiring list. So, and if you're a demonstrator out there, I'm a demonstrator, we also got to see the new annual catalog, which is amazing. <laughs> I'm super excited. I have a very, very long list of things that I want to get. Now that doesn't go live until the beginning of May. So that's um, May, uh, May 4th is when it goes live. So uh, keep an eye out for that. And if you are a customer and you want a catalog from me, automatically you have to have purchased $50 in merchandise or more in the last six months. So keep that in mind. Um, you'll be using the subtle regardless, Kimmy. I see that. Yeah, I can understand. I, I am inclined to doing that too, although I, I probably won't. There's some other ones that, what is it called? The Tasteful Textiles, which is a really nice, lovely texture too. It's a little bit more going on than the subtle, but it's a nice alternative. So I'll probably be using that more at the very least. All right, what else? Okay, so my 18 year anniversary special um, technically ends it on the 20th, but I got a couple orders after that and I decided, well, I just want to keep it going until I don't have any more stuff. So I'm just going to give away everything that I have to give away. So the special will go through March 31st um, or while supplies last. So I'm down to maybe one or two options for each category. And I had gifts at up to a maximum of eight gifts. Um, at starting at 50, then 75, then 100, 150, and 200. So you could get gifts at all those levels and some are you're at the first level. I think you're getting multiple, um, which is how you get to the eight. So keep word to the wise, if you place your retiring products order early, you will also, if I have stuff left, <laughs> get those goodies as well. All the, um, the assortment of designer series paper uh, that was part of the $50 order is all gone. I've given it away. Lots of my club members got it because um, they placed orders this month and uh, other customers as well. So, um, but I will probably place in an alter alternative assortment of designer paper in there just because I can't stand to not have people get what I want them to get. So um, anyway, so that's still going on. So my 18 year anniversary celebration has really just, just, just keep going. <laughs> Why not, right? Okay, so let's see where we are. Okay, next up, the Butterfly Bouquet Stamp Camp. Almost, the registration deadline is Saturday. It's almost done. Like, you can't sign up after that. And I only have a limited number of kits because you may be aware the Butterfly Bijou Designer Series paper, which is one part of that class, we're using that in the class, um, sold out. I sold out with, I think, the first two weeks that it was available to customers. So kind of sad, it's beautiful paper. 
We've reconfigured the class ever so slightly so that we can accommodate more people. Um, it's still going to be an amazing class, 12 beautiful projects, um, some fun folds. I showed you sneak peeks last week. You can look at last week's video if you missed it to see um, sneak peeks of the four projects that I contributed out of the 12. Um, so anyway, it's going to be an amazing class, so definitely don't miss out. Sign up sooner rather than later. Um, and you can also purchase just the PDF if you don't want to buy the kit. Although the kit, <laughs> oh, Kimmy, you're so sweet. <laughs> she says, I love your bubbly personality. <laughs> I'm just talking really fast. <laughs> um, okay, so where was I? You got me distracted. Oh my gosh. Okay, where was I? Uh, oh yeah, so you can buy the PDF only if you want, but if you buy the full kit, it just makes it so much easier because we've done like at least half of the work for you. You will be cutting your own designer series paper. You'll be doing your own die cutting of uh, the um, the dies that come with the butterfly, br the brilliant butterfly. What is it called? Butterfly brilliant, brilliant butterfly. One of those um, with that bundle. But we will be doing the die cutting of the other pieces in part. So I did use my and my one of my design team members. We used the stitch shape framelits. Um, and some of the, uh, the layering circles. And so uh, that other die cutting will be done for you, plus the cutting of other cardstock pieces. So a lot of the work is done for you. So it's a great way to take the class. Hi, Wendy. Good to see you here. <laughs> okay, let's see. Just happened to pop up and see Wendy's name. Wendy's from uh, England, right? From the UK. So uh, I love it that you're joining in. I think I even see your little UK symbol there. All right. Um, okay, so the prize this week. I didn't tell you the prize this week. So I am going to give away one each of the two cards that I'm making. So you're going to see me make the card and then I'll draw among the winners. I have to tell you what you have to do in order to win. Obviously sharing, it, you're getting two entries for sharing and you get two entries for tagging a friend, but it has to be a new friend. I've actually been writing down who you've been tagging. I don't know why I'm doing that, but I can actually go back and look. <laughs> so. Um, Anyway, uh, yes, so tagging a friend. And just incidentally, okay, so when you tag a friend, you don't need to use the hashtag, okay? But you do need to type it in such a way, many of you probably know this, but there were some that didn't show up right, where you, your, your friend's name has to actually be highlighted. That means that they are your friend on Facebook and that if, if it's not highlighted, then they're not gonna actually receive the tag. Now I will say, where that happened last week, I still gave you entries. Um, you know who you are out there, <laughs> maybe, because um, I, I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to um, not have you get entries. But in order for your friend to really be tagged, you have to um, not use the hashtag and just put their name in there. Okay, so other ways to get entries. Um, this brings me to, uh, so I want you to comment and um, over the next, okay, so we have about five weeks before the catalog retires. Um, and during those five weeks, I kind of go into this frenzy. I've got to share all these retiring things because I'm not going to be able to play with them after in my head, right? Because I want to show you current stuff, things that you can buy, not things that you can't buy. And it's a great way to showcase the, the retiring stuff anyway. So, um, oh my goodness, Lori, you have tagged several people. Thank you so much. Wonderful. <laughs> That's six entries you got. And there's even a, a Melissa in the mix. I love that. Good name. <laughs> All right, so um, anyway, so the hashtag is retired item demo. And what it means is I want you to do, use that hashtag, retired item demo, and I have my little piece of paper here so that you guys will know, and I'm trying to be clear. I'll put it down on the, on the screen when my phone is facing down. Um, for you to say hashtag retired item demo, and then just say what you want to request that I show, that's retiring, okay? So what that means is that you're gonna be telling me what, what things that are retiring that you really want to see before they're gone, because guess what? I'm not gonna be showing them after they're gone, after they're retired. So this is your sort of last chance. And it also kind of tells me what you're maybe gonna miss when it does retire. So um, that's one way to get entries. You get a single entry for um, each time you use that hashtag. And then the second thing is kind of a fun thing because it's a segue into what we're gonna do next week, okay? So my theme in next week's Treehouse TV episode, wait for it, <laughs> is um, I'm gonna do a card salad party. <laughs> so if you guys have never heard me use that term, card salad, I, it's my little term that I've coined for basically all the little pieces and parts um, from a given creative session um, that uh, 
that I didn't use. So usually when I create, I, I make a lot of pieces, vocal pieces and pieces and parts, and I have all this leftover stuff, and it goes into a baggie, typically all sort of generally coordinates color-wise, and it's generally the same stamp set. And so I pull out those little card salads. I think of those little pieces and parts as the little tomato and the cucumber and the, you know, all that good stuff and you put in an actual salad. I love the food metaphors, you know, or the analogies, I should say. Um, <laughs> Um, and so I'm going to design from those card salads, and I have a lot of them. I'll probably do a bunch of the work ahead of time. So here's what I want you to be thinking about between me, me now and next week. I'll have to remind you at the very end. So um, I want you to guess how many finished pieces, like cards, I will make in next week's um, session, okay? <laughs> so. I, I'm going to have some stuff ready. I might be making three by three cards. I might be making tags. I might be making mini cards. I might be making full cards. So I'm, I'm kind of challenging myself to pull out a bunch of card salads, sort of, you know, pre-think out like how I'm going to design it. And then I'm going to like, like fast, fast create, like speed create <laughs> or at least speed make. Right. And it's going to be all these old card salads and I'm going to look for things that are retiring. So you'll also get to see things that are retiring. So. Now I noticed, um, oh, the tin tile embossing folder, that's a good one. I love that embossing folder and I hate that it's retiring. <laughs> it's a really good one. Okay, so I hope that is clear. I will try to, I will describe it again at the end. So there's two hashtags when I face the camera down, you're gonna see them on the screen um, to help remind you. Um, and then as one last reminder before I do the project demonstration, um, Remember that once you're in the video, if you click on the video and I'm big on your screen, you should see a bell at the top of the screen. If you want to uh, be notified whenever I go live in a video, you can click that bell and when it's filled in, it will help you to be notified when, um, when I go live. So it's just an, an easier way to find me when I go live. Um, even if, if you follow me, that helps, but it's not as good as clicking that bell and you only see the bell when I'm actually live or when somebody else is live. So. Just uh, a quick little reminder on that front. Okay, so let's turn the camera down and uh, we'll get to the projects. Now you get to see my ceiling. <laughs> okay, all righty. So there is my little hashtag cheat sheet for you while I get set up and started. Hi, Megan. Hi, Dean. <laughs> Um, okay, let's see. Um, okay, so sharing the video gets you two entries, tagging a new friend, remember no hashtag, um, and the full name, and, and then the two actual hashtags, hashtag retiring item demo. Now, it doesn't matter if you use um, capitals or lower cases, but you don't want any spaces between the letters. So when you do a hashtag, you don't have any spaces. I kind of made it look like there was a space there, so I'm trying to point that out. No space. <laughs> It has to be hashtag and then continuous letters. I know it doesn't really quite appeal to those of us that, you know, are thinking like we're writing a sentence or something. But that's just a little reminder because I saw a bunch of that in the last couple weeks as well. Okay, so those are the reminders of hashtags. Okay, so Butterfly Brilliance, I showed that last week. This is the featured product of the um, Butterfly Bouquet um, Stamp Camp class. And of course the, um, the coordinating uh, dies, which I don't actually have handy, but I showed them last week. And then we're also going to be using the Very Versailles set Forever Fern also. And I uh, have set up my stamp on the Stamparatus, so I've stamped the whole thing all at once. Um, oh, Barbara thinks I can do 11. Oh my gosh, Teresa 15. Oh, I feel like I'm being seriously challenged just thinking about that, making 15 things all in one thing. So um, <laughs> anyway, I love it. You guys clearly have a lot of confidence in me. <laughs> I'm going to have to be really prepared for speed stamping. Okay, I'm going to actually set my Stamparatus aside and grab the things that I need for right now. Okay, so I have given myself a jump start. Now, I hope most of you guys know how to do heat embossing, but I'll take you through kind of the basic steps in case you don't. So, plain piece of white cardstock. I use my embossing buddy, which is an anti-static. We don't sell that anymore, but a lot of you probably have it. Um, I think it's kind of filled with cornstarch or something like that. I know, I'm really glad that Very Versailles is staying as well. And then I'm gonna take my Versamark ink pad, which is clear sticky ink, ink up my stamp, which I would be doing on my Stamparatus, 
and and then I'm just going to stamp on this baby and then I'll put it into some embossing powder and then voila it's already done <laughs> okay so I have heat embossed two pieces here and uh, one of them is one kind of embossing powder and one is another so we're gonna that's part of what I'm going to show you today this one is actually white and this one is clear you can probably tell that they look a little bit different um, so we're gonna start with the one that's white and hopefully you guys have had enough time looking at that I see you guys are all using the correct hashtag so I'm gonna put that aside for now and we're gonna start with the white okay where am I <laughs> I always put things aside and make a big pile next to me I have to make sure not to bury the other things I want to show you before we're through okay so I'm using uh, several ink pads here and because this sort of has a bit of a vintage kind of look to it um, I chose colors that I thought were sort of I don't know, antique -y, a little bit muted, not super bright colors. I tried a bunch of different greens, but I just didn't feel like um, most of them worked. The Mossy Meadow just had the sort of vi most vintage -y sort of look to me. So what I'm going to start with is actually I'm using um, an image from the Forever Ferns set. Um, and this is going to be, it's going to show up basically in, a, in the background. There's my mossy meadow and just, yes. Okay, so I'm gonna stamp this in a few places over the top of my stamped images. So I'm guessing a lot of you know what an, a resist is, um, but essentially the heat embossed images are slick and smooth non-porous so the ink doesn't absorb into them it just sits on the surface so it looks like they're in the foreground now right but lo and behold they're not going to look in the foreground for very long I'm going to take a paper towel I want it to be clean make sure there's no additional ink on there and I'm just going to start by dabbing it. If I rub it, I might actually rub some of the green where I don't want it. And spraying that with a little bit of water. You can see I have some green on there. Some of it just kind of came off the surface. And I'm tapping it just to get most of it off. And then I'm going to go ahead and rub. So the green is now going to look like it's in behind the butterflies. And this is one of the coolest things about an embossed resist is that you can create that dimension. Now this, you know, you can't really see the butterflies too well there, but you're going to see them a lot better in just a minute. I sprayed it with just water, so just plain old water. I have multiple water sp spritzers around. I use them, you know, when I dry emboss pieces and all kinds of things. So. All right, so next I'm gonna grab my Seaside Spray. This is one of the ink colors that's retiring and I think I might just cry when it's gone because I really, really love this color. Um, so I've been using it in a lot of cases. It's uh, also in our Color Fusers blog hop um, color scheme that comes out the beginning of April. And uh, so I'm just gonna start doing some sponging or blending of my colors I like to start off the page and typically when I do my colors I kind of like to see it in sort of three different places it's nothing scientific about this is all kind of just and the more I um, so I'm going to sponge it I'm going to put the ink on there and I'm going to have most of the ink on it when I first start and then it's going to get more subtle. So I want to go towards the center when it's more subtle because I do want some areas that are light. And I'm using a lot of this light color because it is the lightest color. So I want it to be sort of the most prevalent. So there's kind of my step one 
Um, all right, next I'm going to grab a little bit of my Misty Moonlight. And I'm also starting with lightest because I'm using the same blending brush. Now, you can see there's a little bit of color still on there. But, yeah, well, if I brush really hard, a lot seems to come off. But I'm going to a darker color, so I'm not really worried about it. Let me just show you for one second. I have a bunch, bunch of blending brushes. And I have them by color, so I'm going to use all my oranges with that, all my yellows with that on my reds with that, you know, you get the idea, right? So I have, I, that little holder uh, holds 15 um, blending brushes and it's almost full. Some of them are, are not yet used, um, but I got that at uh, stampinstorage.com. If you use the link on my website, um, I might even get a little commission because I am an affiliate for Stampin' Storage. It's a very small amount, but if you decide you have to have one of those blending brush holders, uh, I'd love it if you'd use my, my link. So, um, and you'll find it on the blog page. So if you, that's one of the tabs on my website. All right, so I'm gonna now do my Misty Moonlight, which is my next darkest color. This is also an in color. I'm gonna be a little bit more sparing with how I do my next darker color. Cause I don't want this to be too dark. And I actually think I'm gonna do that sort of I'm taking off some of the color so I don't get the sort of splotch. I'm going to do that kind of sort of just the center of my butterfly. So I want to have sort of some darkness towards the center. So the last I looked, these um, blending brushes, they've been super popular, were actually unorderable because um, they've been so popular. I think the up can't keep up with the demand. So um, I'm sure that they will come back. Uh, they're definitely in the new catalog. They're not retiring or anything. And of course, um, they're doing away with the sponges, so they need to have some things. The sponge daubers are staying as well, so that's another possible tool. And those just sit on your finger, but um, I really like these blending brushes, the best of all the tools we have right now for coloring. Okay, so you can see I'm getting Dark in the center. Okay, pull off some of that color. Blend more in the middle to get the sort of lighter colors. And then I'm gonna come in with my Knight of Navy. This is where I get lost in my creating. I know I'm missing all kinds of comments. <laughs> so here's my Knight of Navy and I'm gonna be extra sparing with that. But I like to have sort of a little Gives it makes it more dramatic to have some really darker elements. It also helps to frame it. You can see how dark that is right there. And I'm mostly off the page. You can probably see that. Because I don't want to darken it too much. When you do this kind of thing, it turns out really different every time. So it's very hard and I wouldn't even suggest you try to get something exactly the same because it's just likely not going to happen. And each one's going to be different and beautiful in its own way. So I may have mentioned at the beginning that in addition to showing these projects, I have some other projects that use the emboss resist technique in various ways with other stamps. So I'm going to show those at the end. I think it's a great way to show the versatility of the technique. Okay, let's go. I'm just gonna go over each of the butterflies. So I'm gonna sort of cleaning them off a little bit, making sure that I get their sh sh shapes defined a bit. Okay, and last but not least, I could work on this all night long. It's just so much fun. I'm gonna take a little bit of my um, mossy meadow and I'm just going to come in where where the green is to sort of soften those foliage pieces give me a little bit of green okay now I've got one other step I have to make that like sky 
like it's okay if it's light but I don't want it to be totally white I think I'm, I'm gonna go with that okay so I've got a few more quick steps to do with this so now I've got my Memento Black ink. Oh, I'm glad you like it, Jolene. Just happened to look up. Oh, you think it looks fabulous. Wonderful. I'm so glad, Wendy. <laughs> All right. So, <clears throat> got things falling down over here beside me. Okay. So I'm going to ink up this stamp. This is from the Very Versailles stamp set. This is the kind of stamp that's just so darn versatile because it's great for just kind of texture and added background. Um, and this gives it really the nice vintagey look. So I'm going to actually stamp off because I want it to be subtle and I'm literally going right over the top. I'm going to do one off to the side over here and then I'm going to ink it up. So I use second and third inking, stamp off, and then I'm going to do another one over here to the right. And then one more step. So again, I'm going to bring in my paper towel, my water, spray it, and then I'm going to go over the whole thing. Okay, so you have to check it out, the before and the after, right? That looks really pretty. I see a wow. Thank you, MJ. <laughs> the after is going to be even more pretty because what happens because of the resist, because the ink's just sitting on the surface of those um, white embossed uh, butterflies, so when I take my paper towel, oh, check it out. I just did the tiniest little bit. You can see the white just kind of starts popping and it allows you to see the shape of the butterfly. Is that amazing or what? I just love it. Okay, so let's just do this, baby. See how different that one butterfly is from the rest? Now you could be tempted to just leave the other color on there, but you're probably gonna wipe it off onto your clothes. So you don't wanna do that. You just gotta wipe it off. Notice how it's just, oh my gosh, it just comes to life. Now, if this is too bright and crazy for you, you're going to love the second one, maybe even more. But I think this is just pretty darn stunning. What do you guys think? I think it is. <laughs> I'm biased, but yes, I think, it's, I think it's pretty beautiful. All right, so now I'm just going to put some adhesive on the back side. You can see I stamped it on, why did I, st I stamp it on the back side too, I guess. <laughs> Didn't realize I did that. That's what it looks like when it's just a Versamark on the back side. Versamark is a great ink pad for doing a tone on tone, even on white. So you can use it for heat embossing or on any color. It's the most versatile ink pad we have because you can use it on any color. And you can use it for heat embossing. Okay, so we're just going to put that onto a white card base. This is the simplest kind of layer you could possibly do. And then I've got a couple pieces of ribbon. This, I just love this ribbon. This is the Seaside Spray Glitter Ribbon. And I finally, after it been, being in the catalog for at least a year, finally found perfect places to use it. Um, use it on some Christmas cards a while back, but or winter cards, I should say, and they were beautiful, but I'm loving it on these. Okay, so I'm just gonna tie this around. So, left over right, and then left over right. Is that gonna do what I want it to do? I want the tails to come towards the same direction. So there's that. I can bow the paper, the cardstock, so that I can move it where I want it. And then I'm going to tie one of these ribbons. This is Knight of Navy. This comes as part of a variety pack of ribbon. It's also retiring. Both of these are retiring. Um, I wanted to show you this variety of ribbon because you wouldn't otherwise know. So it comes in a set of three. It's the Playing with Patterns ribbon combo pack. So those three. I kind of wish the Navy and the others were sold separately because, you know, sometimes you just want the one. But that ribbon is going away, and I do love this delicate, uh, shiny ribbon. Can you see how shiny it is? I'll bring it up to the camera in a second. So I'm just tying this second ribbon. This was kind of like, to me, a bit about sort of framing the whole piece, giving it a little bit more 
interest, even though the butterflies themselves are quite beautiful. I just wanted a little bit of shine and something else to anchor the design. So now I'm going to move that one up a little bit. I kind of wanted them slightly staggered so that the navy is just below. The knot is just below the seaside spray. And then I'm just going to trim it off. So there's a basic thing. There you go. So that's that's my design. The name of the print stamp. You mean this one? Is that the one you mean? If that's um, the very Versailles, I'll show that stamp set again. So there's the stamp set. And in the next sample, I'm going to be using this image. This is a lovely set for um, just the different elements that it has. I think that's what you probably meant, the print stamp. Let me know if, if not. So that's project number one. So project number two, this one, you sort of, is sort of a two for one design. So I'm going to do some of the same things. I may not finish the whole thing because I have another one that's finished to show you. Just in the interest of time, I wanted to be able to show you all the other samples. Um, so let's start with this little packet here. And I'm using some ribbons on this one as well. This ribbon, I think this one's retiring. It's the linen, mossy meadow linen, uh, braided linen trim. And then this is definitely retiring. It's that gold. Uh, comes in a variety pack with the Forever Fern Suite. Um, and yeah, so happy that Very Versailles is staying in the catalog. Such a great, great thing. So for this one, I'm going to now use this image from Very Versailles just to get a slightly different look. And I am missing one thing I need to have in front of me. Hold on. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and start with stamping this image, just like I started with the green on the other one. Now, I did this one different from my original, and I'm going to explain to you the difference in just a minute. Of course, it's the clear embossing powder makes it different, has a slightly different look. And uh, if, you, if the white was a little too bold for you, you may like this one a little bit better because you can get a sort of more subtle look this way. So I'm going to do some towards the bottom as well. All coming in from the side. And then again, I'm going to dab off the excess. You can see I'm getting a little green in there. But I'm also going to be going over it with the blue again. So the, the clear, you're seeing the white in behind, but it's not nearly as bright. Um, okay, so next up, let's see what I really need to show you guys. Um, I am going to do my sponging with, or my blending brushing. <laughs> it's not a very elegant way to say that. Starting with my seaside spray. And I'm just kind of going over it fast. Come in with a little bit of my green. Okay, that's a lot of green, huh? I love mossy meadow. I'm sure you, many of you know this used to be a, an in color that got brought into the regular collection, which I love. I'm kind of just doing this one super fast just because you've seen me do a lot of this stuff already before. Doing a little misty moonlight. Okay, I think I should fast forward. All right, so pretend that's done. <laughs> now I've got there's my other piece. There we go. I dry embossed with my brick embossing folder. Now, I love this embossing folder. This one is sticking around. So happy. And I'm going to do some blending brushing of this just to bring out the texture of the brick. 
And on this one, I'm going to use more of my Misty Moonlight. I love embossing folders. And the center is really going to be covered, so I don't really need to do too much of the center. So I just think it's, it's really lovely how it brings out the texture of the embossing folder. And you can do that with any embossing folder. Got a little smudge of dark right there. Let's see if I can darken that up and pretend it's not there. Yeah, it's like something on the brick, right? Okay. You said, I wonder how, how it looked. The butterflies are stamped with the Versamark and then colored with the brushes. Yes, there, that is a different kind of resist, actually. It's much more subtle. Um, and in fact, well, I already, I, the one that had the Versamark just on it is um, already covered, but I could have shown you if I had seen that question earlier. Anyway, so, <laughs> so that is sponged and it's just going to go on the front of my card. And this piece here, you're pretending that it's finished because I'm going to show you another one. I'm going to stamp on this. Actually, I'll do one more step on this. I'm not done with the sponging, but I just want to give you the idea of where I'm going with it. And then I'll show you the finished one. So again, I'm stamping off and then I'm going to do my, let's see if I can get enough from this to do third right in there. And then um, I'll wipe it off just like I did before. And I would be adding more color to this because it would bring out the butterflies more. But the idea behind this one is that it's a quarter sheet. So four and a quarter by five and a half, whereas the other one was four by five and a quarter. So it would fit on a card front. So for this one, I cut it in half and I'm going to zoom forward, pretend I cut it in half. Show you the one I've got prepared. So this one is the same idea. I've cut it in half. Now I do want to show you one thing. I hope I can show you that well enough. On this one, I actually sponged the cardstock before I heat embossed. So those images in there are just a lot softer looking. Now they're softer looking anyway than the one that's done with the white. So let's go with the um, gradations. So this one, there's, it's white heat embossing, so it's brilliant and bright. This one is, there's nothing inked behind and it's clear embossing powder. And this one uh, has ink behind the images. So it's kind of, it's kind of hard to tell because I haven't sponged this middle one well enough, but you might be able to tell the difference there. So just, you know, those are just three ways that you can do your emboss resist, either have ink in behind the embossing or just over the top. Um, so this is the one I finished. Now you might notice that on this one, I also did all my sponging and then I heat embossed and you have sort of a grainy, grainy bits on there because the ink stays wet or sort of clings to the embossing powder unless you really dry it or use the embossing buddy a lot. So I ended up with sort of this, in, this texture in the background, which is not a bad thing. It's kind of interesting, but it's just not as crisp. So that's just word to the wise. Um, you want to make sure that it's dry, that you heat it with a low setting of your heat tool, or you use your embossing buddy liberally over the top before you do your heat embossing if you do your sponging first. Okay, so I'm just going to put this together quickly so you can see how it comes together. And I just thought it would be, you know, you can use that full stamp to make the full face of the card like we did on the last design, but I wanted to show different ways to use that stamp. So this again is cut in half this way. And that's how I got this. This is the bottom half, as you can probably tell of that shape. So you're getting two cards for the, the price of one or the effort of one, shall we say. Okay, so let's go ahead and attach this. Okay. 
I got dimensionals already on the back side. The backings are already removed. Um, will I have this recorded? You came in late. Well, it's on Facebook, so you will definitely be able to go back onto Facebook and watch there. And then I also upload this video to YouTube on Saturday, the Saturday, Saturday following the live. And I do a blog post, which has all the dimensions and supplies for the projects that I do. That also goes live on Saturday in the evening. So, you know, it's your Saturday night time to play is to check in with me at 7 p.m. Generally, that's when I go live on, when, I'm sorry, when I publish on YouTube, whatever I do on Thursday nights. So, just word to the wise. Okay, so now I've got some of my linen, um, braided linen trim in the Mossy Meadow. And I'm just tying that around the top. See, I have my, little, my finger there holding it in place so I can keep it tight. It's mostly tight. And then... This is literally the last of my second roll of this lovely twine. I'm so sad it's going away because I really love this, this uh, gold shiny twine. Let's see. Where? So it does actually fray at the end, but it's kind of a nice uh, intentional look. I, I often uh, fray it on purpose. You know, just because I like the way it looks. Okay, I'm just going to do a tie. This is the trickiest part is getting it nice and tight. Because when it's around the full card body, you don't have the choice to do the faux tie thing. Some of you guys may know what I'm talking about. And it's not too tight, but it's okay. It will do. And then I'm just going to snip it off. Now, one of the things that I thought of when I was um, doing my rewind last week, reflecting on my how I've changed as a crafter, when I first started crafting, I'd have big, big bows and long tails. And as I've done this more, I just go for the smaller, more demure bows. And just, I don't know, that's just how it's changed. Okay, so here we go. So I'm doing kind of the same thing, staggering my two little knots. And there's the, my finished card. Now I have one other element that I put on here. These are also retiring. Now, <laughs> I have to tell you something funny. There was one time a while, a while back, it was quite a while ago, but um, I had made this card, and I, I just thought of this because I thought maybe I did it right now, um, and I couldn't find it anywhere. And I was just racking my brain, looking everywhere to try to find it. And it turned out that I had put this focal piece for a card on the back side of another card. <laughs> it was the funniest thing. And when I found it, I just, oh my goodness, I just, I'm thinking I'm crazy, but it was just so much funny because, so, so funny because sometimes when I'm crafting, it's like, oh, there's a Navy, Knight of Navy card base. I can look at it with my pieces on it. And I just do that for a second. And in that case, I just completely spaced out that it was actually a card on the other side. Anyway, it's just too funny. I make myself laugh. It's a good thing. <laughs> okay, let's see. I, I imagine I'm not alone in that. I'm not the only one who makes themselves laugh. Okay, so there we go. I'm just going to use a couple of these, what are they called? Gold glitter enamel dots. They're very shiny and sparkly. Um, I don't know, maybe borderline too much, but I still like them. Adds a little bit of bling and ties in nicely to the gold twine at the top. Sort of ties it all together. So there's my finished card. There's the other one, the top half of that piece that I made. You've had your cut had to cut your cards in two on occasion, I see. Yeah, well, I probably had to grab my undo. I don't know if you're familiar with that product, but it allows the adhesive to un become un unadhere unadhered. <laughs> so you can remove parts and pieces and put them back the way they're supposed to. But um, anyway, I think that's what I had to do in that case. But I just cracked myself right up. All right, so I'm going to just put this stuff away, and I want to show you a couple of other um, emboss resist projects and ideas um, so you'll have some choices when you go play okay where are we I'm gonna take this away because it will give us a nice clean surface to look at these other samples let's 
So some of this stuff is retiring, some is not. I'm going to show you the things that are not retiring to start with, and some of you may be familiar with these project samples. So I'm going to just lay those out. Where's the other one? There's my other one. This is the original one. So if you win the drawing for this week, if I draw your name, um, you'll get one or the other of those two designs. So just so you know, let's move my ink pads. And let's put out my hashtags to remind you guys. If you have forgotten or if you came in late, those are the categories of things to do to get entered into the drawing for one or the other of these two cards. Okay, so earlier this year, I did this one with the Forever Fern set, and I just love this. I, I made two of them. I sent one to my mom. This one did have sponging in the background, so you can see these leaves are so subtle because the ink was in the background, and then I put ink on the top, but because the color was in the back, it made this look very muted. So it just gives you a way to have a lot of depth and dimension to your project. And this one, of course, just, you know, stands up. It's really bright. This one had mostly white in behind. I didn't have a lot of ink in behind that one. And it was a piece of white cardstock, so that's why you see the white through there. This one had some, uh, this color, which is the, what is it, soft sea foam, I think it is, in behind, so it looks like that color. So anyway, that's how I did this one. I just love that one. And then I think not too long after that, I used this stamp set. This one has, um, it was white in behind, so I did not sponge in behind. So you can see the image is nice and bright and white. But I've created a lot of different dimension by using different images with different depths of color, some darker, some lighter. And then here's some other ones that I did that were the similar idea, sponging in behind so that you'd have sort of soft, subtle images instead of bright, bold images like we have on this one with the white. Um, so those are a few. Those are, like I said, products that are current, that are not retiring. And let me show you some things that are actually retiring. Um, so before I actually show you those, I did want to tell you that um, you can also not just um, sponge ink in behind your images, but you can stamp uh, images in behind. Now, you doesn't really work with any of these images because they're fine detailed images, but for an image like this that has, that's a solid image, I could have stamped smaller little itty bitty images, like maybe little tiny leaves in behind, um, and then did my heat embossing over the top, and then I would see those shapes in there. I wish I had an example to show you. This was actually one of the, my leftover pieces from my Joseph's Coat Technique class that I did last year. This was also something that I played with in the Joseph's Coat Technique class. So I sponged in behind. That's its own technique. If you're interested in that, I have the class for it on my website. You can check that out. Um, and then a, one of the stamp sets that's retiring, let me show you a couple of fun stamp sets that are retiring the Two A Wild Rose set. This one was the subject of my demonstration at an onstage um, event uh, in 2018 in April. They, Stampin' Up! invited me to um, demonstrate this. There's a die set that goes with it and it is retiring. So I made a whole bunch of different cards with this. So this was one of the embossed resists. I actually made my own ink pad for that. Um, if you look up Two A Wild Rose on my website, on my blog, um, you will likely find this project or variations of this because I made a bunch of different variations. So that's um, an embossed resist with um, a make your own ink pad design. And then um, I have a whole bunch more with the um, that are not embossed resist. I'm trying to focus on just embossed resist. But uh, yeah, I have lots of projects that I made for that event. And then um, the Winter Woods is one of the stamp sets that's retiring. And I found this project that was an embossed resist. And in this case, of course, it's all greens, but you can tell I sponged in behind before I heat embossed. Um, then I sponged over the top, so where it was lighter, you see the lightness. And it's, this was not really my favorite project, but it was still, I thought it was definitely worthy of making a card and very pretty and sort of misty um, looking card. Probably make a really nice sympathy card. Uh, let's see what else. Um, and uh, I'm just focusing on the embossed resist. Okay, what else do I have embossed resist? This is another one that was uh, embossed resist. So all these pieces I'm showing you are like what, what are parts of card salad, right? Um, so I have a whole baggie of pieces and parts made with things from the 
with the um, Two Wild Rose stamp set. So this is like a card in the making that's almost done. Um, could be something I could make in my, my speed stamping. This is another one, um, both done with the Two Wild Rose. And then I'm going to share one more. Um, I could keep you here all night long, but I've already been on for an hour. Oh my gosh, where does the time go? So this last one is actually a focal piece I didn't use from my um, uh, Northern Lights Technique class. It uses a retired set. I'm going to show you this set next week, but this is um, one of the focal pieces. This uses um, an image from the Rooted in Nature set, which is retiring also. So I'm probably going to make, that's probably going to be part of my speed stamping next week. But again, if you love that, you might want to check out my um, Northern Lights Technique class that is also uh, on my website. Okay, so and of course, Rooted in Nature, retiring. Really sad that that one's going. I've made lots of beautiful things with that. Um, I could keep you here all night showing you samples. And then the Winter Woods, um, that was the, the this one. <laughs> all right. Okay, have I showed you enough? Have I overwhelmed you? So many fun projects. It's like walking down memory lane uh, showing you all of these things. <laughs> so I'm going to turn the camera facing me. I just... Uh, I didn't look at the clock until like just now and um, so <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh. Uh, a few of you out there have said you could hang out with me all night long. Well, I could probably keep you all night long. <laughs> just too much fun. Okay, where's my notes? I can finish up and let you guys go on with your evening. Um, Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed the Emboss Resist uh, tour and the additional projects as well. Um, and uh, let's see, Whew. Uh, just a couple of reminders before I let you go. So um, uh, I, I am looking forward to hearing from you, Chris, with your address so I can send you your gift. Oh, I'm so glad you liked the cards. Thank you, Lynn. Um, don't forget my 18 year anniversary special offer. If you want to buy retired items, you can take advantage of both things. It discounts on those retiring items and gifts from me. Wahoo. <laughs> um, and of course the butterfly bouquet stamp camp uh, RSVP deadline is this Saturday. So just two days away. I have limited spots, um, limited by that lovely designer paper that goes with the class. So don't delay. If you're interested in that, you can buy just the PDF or you can buy the class with the kit. Um, and let's see what else. And don't forget to use the hashtag. I know you've been sharing, tagging friends, and it's backwards now, so that's a little challenging, but hashtag, what is it called? Retiring item demo, things you want me to demonstrate with that are retiring. Let me know now. There's not very many weeks left. The weeks fill up, so let me know quickly. And if I have those items and I can fit it in the schedule, I will definitely try to do it. I love requests from you guys. And, uh, and then the card salad party number. Don't forget to put that in there as well. Hashtag card salad party number. I know it's a long one. I couldn't figure out a better way to do it. Uh, didn't want a hashtag at the end, even though it looks like a number. <laughs> Um, so yeah, entries for all those fun things. And next week, of course, I will be coming back with that card salad party. It's going to be fun. I've never done this quite this way. Um, so yeah, I'll be doing like speed stamping and I'll be making as many things as I possibly can. And I am hoping that you guys will pull out your own card salad and will be inspired to do sort of the thing that I'm doing because I find I pull out these card salads. I have so much and it's so easy to create, especially if you do like little three by three cards. So um, pull out some baggies of card salad if you have them or boxes if you have them. Um, you may want to start putting them into coordinated baggies after you create if you're, if uh, I know some of you do that like I do it. Um, and I hope you'll be inspired to create after next week's card salad party. Woohoo! <laughs> um, we'll see if I meet the challenge of your, the numbers that you guys are um, guessing. All right. Anything else? What else do I need to tell you? I think that's pretty much it. So we'll, my post, my blog post will go live Saturday, 7 p.m. The video will be up on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, yay. I'm so glad you're here. Um, you can also participate in the drawing um, by participating on YouTube as well. Um, and I'll see you next week. It should be uh, April 1st, I think. Yeah, April 1st. <laughs> I can't believe it. April Fool's. I'm not kidding. <laughs> 
see you next Thursday. Thanks for joining me. <laughs> what is the date for the stamp camp? Well, the stamp camp is actually not a date. It's only a deadline because you're buying the kit in the mail and the tutorial. You make the projects on your own. Everything's cut for you. So it's not tied to a date. So it's very flexible that way. Thanks for the question, Christy. That was a great question. <laughs> I'm glad you liked the cards. Oh, I love just reading the comments. Um, I'm so glad you enjoyed, uh, you enjoy my Thursday evening Facebook lives. I'm glad you're here, Megan, on all of you. <laughs> it's lovely. All right. We'll see you next week. Thank you so much for joining in. I love you guys. You make it so fun. Mwah. Bye. <laughs>